This is one of the few impeachment issues that actually could be resolved by the courts if they act, if they did impose this penalty in a type of retroactive impeachment the president would have standing to challenge it and a court could rule on it so this is the position what professor turley just articulated is also the position of professor dershowitz uh, from harvard and that is the impeachment clause when you look at the both the impeachment clause and the way in which the process is set up it's talking about removal from office The impeachment of the, I said this the other day, of the president of the United States, not a president of the United States. And on January 20th at 12.01, President Trump is a president. He's not the president. So then the question is, if they impeach, they will probably, they're going to impeach today. So he will be impeached. But the impeachment itself doesn't carry a penalty. It just is, it's like the preliminary uh, injunction or, or like the indictment, so to speak. It's the charge. The indictment. Yeah. And then it goes to the Senate for a trial. Well, then can the Senate try the president when he is no longer in office? And there are arguments on both sides. It is not. It has not been ever tested. Uh, former U.S. Court of Appeals judge for the Fourth Circuit, Mike Ludig, reads the Constitution and says, no, you cannot try him once he's out of office. Others say because, as you mentioned, Jordan, the penalty phase, Andy, that that's their argument that you could. But, I mean, when you read the Constitution itself, I think there's a strong argument that you can't. Well, I agree with you, Jay. I think the Constitution does not uh, provide for that. I think you're you're tried when you're in office. If you're in office, the matter of trial, uh, I, I think, does not exist. And I agree with what that judge on the Fourth Circuit said in his analysis. Yeah, also the rules. Yeah. Um, the reason why it takes longer in the Senate is because of their rules. That's not in the Constitution. Right. So in the Constitution, it says sole power to impeach House, sole power to try impeach Senate. They didn't say you got to wait three days, you got to do this, you got to wait four days, you got to have 20 hours of debate. So technically in the Constitution, you could do all of this in three days. Oh, well, yeah, you could do it in a day. Uh, in both chambers. But the rules have been made by Congress to make that impossible. Um, uh, and so that wasn't the Constitution. That was the rules of Congress that well, have made it uh, where even when you've got just a few days left, that's just not enough time well, there's even, to, to, to finish that. Well, there's an even the other, and we brought this up the other day, and this is the idea that the Chief Justice serves as the right. presiding officer. He's not the Chief Justice. He's always the Chief Justice in the United States, but he's, he's not serving as a justice. He doesn't make adjudications. But he is, in fact, the presiding officer. When the president, when they're seeking to remove the president. Only the president, yeah. Is he the presiding officer when they're seeking to remove a former president? Yeah, and and who the else answer would be. Well, but the but the Constitution doesn't say he it's, is. So does know. the Senate set up its own rule? Is there any discussions of this going on, Than? <laughs> there, there's a lot of discussion, Jay, and the simple answer is everybody has an opinion and nobody knows conclusively the yep. answer to really any of those. Though I think maybe the one thing I would add to it, though, Jay, and we said this yesterday— this is why I believe if there's a delay and if Joe Biden is the president it goes when a away. trial is ongoing, the, the votes go down, Jay. They just do. I, I think the votes go down. I, I also wonder, Wes, whether if if there's time in between here and you see all of these hurdles. Because the lawyer representing the president would make a motion to dismiss <laughs> right up front and, it, and would probably go to court before that to say that the proceeding can't even go. But none of this heals the land. <laughs> No, it does not. You know, and, and due process, if this happens this way, would be denied to the president. And, you know, you look at the history of impeachment in the United States, not just with presidents, but other federal officials who have been impeached. The real threat that hangs over a person's head who's going to be impeached is removal from office. That is the punishment. If you look back through our history and if the president's no longer in office, it seems like a, like a moot point to me. The other thing, Jay, about this, though, and I thought a lot about uh, President-elect Biden through all of this, an impeachment is not in Biden's political interest. It would be it would mean the first part of his his administration is totally tied up with drama around the former president. And this is why I, I believe with all of my heart, Biden should have told Nancy Pelosi, either privately or publicly, that she should stand down. It would be his first and most important step in bringing healing and unity to the nation. Because whatever happens this week and potentially in the Senate, impeachment is incredibly needlessly divisive for our country.